Hi, I'm Alan Smith. The garden is a place that can stimulate all of our senses, sight, sound, touch, and in an herb garden, certainly taste and smell. In today's show, we're going to explore how herbs can enliven our sense of taste. We have a great recipe coming up in just a few minutes. And I'll even show you some ways to keep fresh herbs on hand throughout the year. I'll take you down to Texas, where an innovative spa is bringing the healing powers of the garden into the forefront of their therapies. I'll tell you about an herb that I struggle to grow, lavender. And we'll go to a beautiful lavender farm and learn how they make this herb thrive. Plus, the sweet smell of success. We'll talk with the leading producer of decorative fragrances about their natural approach. So stick around. Welcome back. I'm Alan Smith. Today we're exploring the senses and how the garden can enliven all of them. You know, to me, the garden is a place of healing. It's a place I can go to to restore myself and reduce stress. You know, just working in my garden or taking a stroll through it at the end of a long day helps me. And I was delighted to learn that the folks at the Lake Austin Spa Resort feel the same way. They place the garden at the forefront of their spa treatments. Looking around the gorgeous lakeside garden, you'll find an abundance of herbs, such as rosemary, which is used in treatments like the sea salt rubs. And they're all natural facials or even garden related in that they're made up of seaweed. Trisha Sherry is the director of flora and fauna for Lake Austin and tells us more. Lake Austin Spa Resort is focused on mind, body, and spirit. And the garden is a big part of that to renew and recharge people's spirit. And we have a beautiful setting here on the shores of Lake Austin, and we like to take advantage of that tranquil setting. One of the most important things about the job here is that we do garden organically, and um, I enjoy the fact that we're taking care of the earth, and, and uh, we have healthy plants that people can feel like they can go out and take a leaf and, or take a bite from a vegetable that's grown in the garden, and it's not going to be harmful for them. In the garden, our first four beds are dedicated to the kitchen, and then we have herb specialty beds incorporated into the, the middle of the garden. One of the beds is dedicated to the, the traditional culinary herbs, so we have things like bay laurel and uh, a variety of oreganos, basils, and thymes, all things used for traditional cooking. And then we have a medicinal herb garden. Then we also have a herb garden that is full of what I call the decorative and useful herbs. Then we have a mint bed where we have three different kinds of mint and we uh, have bird and butterfly gardens. Our owners are from Louisiana and they have fond memories of the sugar kettle so we incorporated those into our garden. The sugar kettle was once used to boil sugar cane into cane syrup. The garden is uh, important on many levels for the resort. We grow a lot of things that we use in classes, like potpourri classes and uh, pressed flower creations. And uh, we also use the herbs in some of our spa treatments. So you can get a, a salt rub down with some fresh rosemary or use rose petals in a scrub. And many of the spa treatments use the fresh herbs too. Now the herbs aren't reserved for the spa therapies alone. Chef Terry Conlon finds plenty of room for the garden in his kitchen. Just about everything we do starts in the garden one way or another. A lot of our herbs, almost all our herbs, come fresh uh, from the garden, uh, as well as a lot of our vegetable work. We're really going to use the garden, or things from the garden, as maybe the most important part of the meal. Today I'm going to make tabbouleh, which is a, a Middle Eastern uh, grain and vegetable salad, uh, and we'll rely upon uh, some chives, parsley, and mint uh, from the garden. And it starts with uh, a cracked bulgur wheat that we've got here, to which we're going to add some hot water, about a cup and a half of the wheat to two cups of water. We've got some fresh lemon juice and a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. 
Now all we need to do is cover this and let it refrigerate for about two hours so the uh, liquid and the oil will be absorbed by the wheat and we get this. All right. To this we're going to add all those wonderful things that we uh, got from the garden today. We've got some uh, chopped chives, fresh parsley minced, and some spearmint that we have also cut into chiffonade. Some minced red onion, tomato, and garlic. And then we've got several other ingredients here that we can add to embellish this dish if we want, uh, but that would be the basic tabbouleh. Okay, let's add. We've got our minced chives, parsley, very aromatic, beautiful, fresh mint, red onion, lots of diced, fresh, ripe red tomato, and some minced garlic. And all we have to do is toss this with the cracked wheat and we have a beautiful, absolutely delicious and refreshing spring and summer salad. Now let's plate it up. Here's our beautiful cracked wheat tabbouleh salad. And we can further embellish this if we want with maybe, oh, a little shrimp. Got some black Kalamata olives here, just a few. Maybe even a little bit of feta cheese. And then as a finishing touch, how about a flower from the garden? Maybe a couple of the chive spirits. And there you have a beautiful summer luncheon or dinner, fresh from the garden. Now here's a tip. To keep fresh herbs like basil throughout the year, just chop them into small pieces and then place about a tablespoon into a section of an ice tray. Store the cubes in baggies and then when you're ready to use them, you can just pop them into your favorite recipe, like this. What an easy way to enjoy herbs throughout the year. Still ahead, herb containers for any size garden plus a behind-the-scenes look at the leading producer of decorative fragrances, coming up. In the world of decorative fragrances, one name stands above the rest, Aromatique. And what has become a signature of their product is their use of natural elements, like real fruits, flowers, and herbs. Patty Upton founded the company in the early 80s almost by accident. I had a friend that had a gift shop in town, and she asked if I would do something for her store for the holiday season. And I said, well, sure. She said, Patty, now what is this stuff you've brought in? And I said, well, it's the smell of Christmas. And that's how the name came about. We do not refer to our products as potpourri, because potpourri's been around 100 years, but we paint a picture with that fragrance. So the botanicals have to complement the fragrance so it is a whole picture. That's why we're called Decorative Fragrance for the Home and we've given our customers, I feel, a fragrance and a visual that's as close to nature as you can get that's brought inside the home. I've decided if I make something I love, there are a lot of patties out there and they'll love it also. And I think that's one of the main reasons that Aromatique has been successful. Now the process of making Aromatique's product is really quite interesting. Diane Proctor walks us through some of the steps. We always begin with the premise of if we don't like it and wouldn't like to have it in our house, then it won't go out the door. And each time we begin to create a new line, Patty and I do a lot of brainstorming and decide what kind of fragrance. Fragrance is number one. We always select the fragrance first. then. We try to gather botanicals and uh, leaves, anything that would go in it to make it appealing to the eye in addition to the fragrance. This is called orange and evergreen. This evolved from our desire to have a wonderful orange fragrance during the fall season that portrayed the greenery of the holiday season but the rich orange fragrance that people love. So we blended the two thoughts together to come up with a visual that had both oranges, the green base, and greenery of cedar. One of the processes that Aromatic uses is called the freeze dry process. In the machine, the temperature is gradually lowered. And as the temperature goes down, it is extracting the moisture from the flower. And when it's finished, the flower looks like it's just been picked, but yet it has a lifespan that's probably four or five months. I think the most rewarding thing is to take something from its conception and see it sitting on a shelf and walk in a store 
and see some lady buy it, smell it, and smile and pay for it. That is very, very rewarding to me to see somebody that's pleased with one of our products. Potpourri has become a multi-million dollar industry in this country. And it seems like anything that has to do with fragrance is very popular. Designer collections have their own signature of ingredients and fragrances. But I think it's a lot of fun to create your own. This simple combination of lemons, dried leaves, and seed heads is just one example of the many blends you can create. I start by mixing foliage together in this large bowl. I'm using eucalyptus leaves because they hold up for a long time. And these ginkgo leaves I like because of their shape and color. For a little textural contrast, I'm adding some of this cedar. And of course, fruits and berries are always visually interesting, so I'm using some of these eucalyptus berries as well as some of these dried flower heads. I dried these lemon slices in the dehydrator, but you can do the same in a low temperature oven. Now to carry on this citrus theme, I also use some of these lemon balm leaves. Now I'll just blend all of this together. What a beautiful combination of color and fragrance. But there is a way to make this aroma last much longer. To give your own potpourri that extra little boost, you can use these essential oils. These are concentrated fragrances from flowers, herbs, and spices. Since I've followed a lemon theme with the aroma and color of this blend, I'm going to further enhance it with the essential oil of lemongrass. This is sort of like baking chocolate chip cookies. If you want to increase the flavor, add more of the essential ingredient, chocolate chips. Only with this, just add more oil. Since I want this to be particularly lemony, I'm putting about four drops per double handful of the potpourri, and I'm folding it in to make sure that it's distributed evenly. Now these seed heads are good because they absorb the oil and hold it. Now for the presentation. Since most of this came from the garden, more or less, I like to carry out the theme by packaging it in a simple clay pot. I just fill it with potpourri and leave a bottle of the oil on top to refresh it later. For wrapping, I just pull some of this clear wrap up around it, tie it with raffia, and accent it with some greenery. You just want to make sure the potpourri is completely dry so it doesn't cloud the plastic. What a perfect gift from the garden. Coming up, a visit to these amazing lavender fields. Plus, I'll share some ideas on growing and using herbs next. Welcome back. In today's show, we're focusing on herbs and how they tantalize the senses. Earlier, we visited with an innovative spa in Austin, Texas, where they've made the garden the cornerstone to all of their treatments. We even got a great recipe from the chef at Lake Austin Spa and Resort that takes ingredients fresh from the garden. Now, if you missed any of these segments or want more information, just log on to my website. That's pallensmith.com. Right now, I want to share with you how you can grow and enjoy herbs in your garden. If you're interested in getting into gardening, but you really don't have much space, you might try your hand at growing some herbs. These little guys will flourish in some of the smallest of spaces. For example, I'm planting some of my favorite varieties of thyme in a terracotta strawberry jar like this. Since thyme is a low-growing herb, and many of the varieties have a tendency to creep, they're ideal for planting in one of these containers because they can cascade and spill through the openings. Before I plant them, I prepare the soil. Thyme is a Mediterranean herb that grows on rocky hillsides. It needs very good drainage. So even though I'm starting with a basic potting mix, I'm adding a generous amount of sand. Once it's well blended, I'll put it into the jar up to the first opening. Now I'm ready to add the plants. As you put the thyme in, don't worry about being a little rough with them. They can take it. I find it easier to slip them through the inside of the jar and gently pull foliage through like this. Now I'll just continue the process, alternating plants and soil until I get to the top of the jar. Now I've saved this variety called lime thyme for the top, but other varieties I've used are woolly thyme, lemon thyme, and this one called mother of thyme. Now all of us can't have a large garden, but we can grow fresh herbs. They make attractive and delicious container plantings. To give you an example of how I like to use herbs both in and out of the kitchen, let's take a look at a few. 
For instance, the delicate foliage of both dill and fennel can add texture and height to a container or the garden. I just love the flavor of fresh dill on carrots, and there's nothing like the taste of fennel on fresh fish. If you're into Mexican or Italian dishes, the sharp flavor of oregano is ideal. These little low-growing plants can fill an area in a short period of time. And of course, for salsa, an essential ingredient is cilantro. Now all of these require at least six hours of sun, but a must-have for your herb collection that can really take the heat is basil. It's delicious in salads and of course pesto, but I wait until the first really warm days before planting it. Growing herbs has become very popular. We use them every day whether we realize it or not. For example, the mint flavor in the toothpaste you used this morning no doubt came from the leaves of peppermint. If you're interested in growing some of your own herbs, I recommend that you start with something that's not too difficult, like one of the mints. If you grow this plant, you'll find that it's easy to grow a lot of mint and a little more of a challenge to grow just a little because the plants can be very vigorous. In fact, mint can be downright invasive, but I like to keep it around anyway because of its fresh scent, and I like to use it in certain dishes. You shouldn't let the fact that it is such a vigorous grower scare you away because there's a way to keep it contained. Rather than planting the mint directly into your beds, cut the bottom out of a large plastic nursery container and bury it in the soil. Then plant the mint within the container. This will keep it from spreading and taking over, at least for a while. You just can't believe all the different varieties of mint that are out there with interesting names and subtle aromas, like this one called Hillary Sweet Lemon Mint. And for those with a sweet tooth, there's chocolate mint. One of my personal favorites is apple mint. I like its fuzzy foliage. It can make a nice addition to a flower arrangement. And when it gets tall and leggy like this, I just cut it back. It causes the plant to grow denser and thicker. And as you can see, like most mints, it can take a little shade. A California dream in these beautiful lavender fields when we return. We all have our favorite flowers, and some of them, well, they're easier to grow than others. Take lavender, for instance. For me, it's always been a struggle to grow, but this year I have a bumper crop. Recently, I had an opportunity to visit with Gary Meehan, who spends his days in acres of this beautiful and fragrant herb. So what kind of year are you having with the lavender here at Bonnie Doon? Here at Bonnie Doon Farm, we've enjoyed a beautiful spring, uh, lots of extra moisture that the plants obviously wanted, uh, continuous sun, uh, the plants couldn't be nicer. Gary, what are the best conditions for the soil to, to bring forth this sort of bloom? Loose sandy soil is what I really recommend for anyone interested in planting lavender themselves. It's worked best for us. Uh, alluvial wash, uh, something that's well drained. Since my soil is such heavy clay, I found that growing my lavender in containers works much better. I can certainly agree with that. A great companion to P. Allen Smith Gardens is our website, pallensmith.com. Log on to learn more about today's topic. You'll also get hands-on gardening tips, design ideas, lessons in garden history, delicious recipes, and crafts projects that will take you from season to season, all beautifully illustrated with thousands of colorful images that will inspire your creativity. Plus, don't miss Allen's free weekly newsletter delivered straight to your inbox, all just a mouse click away at pallensmith.com. I'm always invigorated when I think of how the garden continues to delight our senses in so many healthy and refreshing ways. The sense of taste that comes alive with herbs and cooking, the uplifting scent of natural fragrances, the relaxing sensation of rosemary and sea salts being used for therapy, or the beauty that we see when we walk into an herb garden. You don't have to have a tremendous amount of space to grow and enjoy herbs. In fact, I've got some great ideas for growing herbs in limited space. Just check out my website. That's pallensmith.com. Until next time, from the garden, I'm Alan Smith. Accommodations provided by Lake Austin Spa Resort, Austin, Texas. In this garden I dream of 
a bed of flowers Bluebirds sing of the beauty all around us And every time the sun comes out I can't help but smile Oh 